thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I just recently did a video on the flip through of this completed art journal and showed everything that's inside. And now I just thought I'd like to do a quick video showing you how I like to decorate the outside of these Dilutions journals. So let's get started and I'll show you my process. My aunt used to belong to a quilting group and about six years ago, her quilting friends got together and sent me a whole box of their scraps. So these are pieces that got cut off, you know, when they would size up the quilt and they had these beautiful strips and pieces of material sewn together. Little tiny scraps of all sorts. A lot of them are super pretty, like batiks and cool, just funky patterns. Look at these cool pieces of material. So they sent me this box filled with all different kinds of scraps and I put them in a bin. I've still got some left. At that time I was making handmade dolls um, like the Patty Kalia type dolls and so I've just been using them now on um, art journal projects. So what I'm going to do is add these pieces to the front of my and journal. I like these, um, these elastic closures for the Ranger Dilutions journals but I think for this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and remove it and just cut it off the book. I know that sounds terrible and it feels terrible to do it, but I'm going to put a different closure on the book. Okay, so now for the cover, what I'm just going to do is take this material and I'm going to start putting it down on the book just using some Mod Podge, some matte Mod Podge. <clears throat> and I'm not going to do any rhyme or reason or specifics of laying it out because I'm going to just start doing like um, a textile fabric collage is basically what it's going to turn out like. And I love frayed edges, so if it's got a straight edge, I might cut it and tear it and fray it. And I like to use Mod Podge for this because um, you use a lot and I don't want to waste my good matte gel medium that I use for collage, for regular paper collage. So... I just put down some Mod Podge in a nice generous amount and I'm going to just start laying on these beautiful pieces of material. And I also go over the top of the material and I don't even care if like strings get in there. They just look so pretty and add so much texture. So the Mod Podge goes underneath and it goes on top and I just start adding the pieces. I think I'll cut that strip so it's not such a long strip. Maybe I'll cut it here and tear it. When you tear, you get those great edges. So basically, put down your Mod Podge. Put down your material. Get it as flat as you can get it. This has some seams, so it, it is going to be a little bit chunky in places, but I don't care about that. I like chunky. So put it on the bottom, put it on the top. And when I go to put down the next ones, I sometimes overlap it over the previous. The previous one so it'll go on and it'll get overlapped over that previous piece of material that I put down and I'm gonna just keep working all the way until the whole book is covered both sides are covered with material look at how wonderful and yummy that is this material said find love then give it all away it's just pretty pretty materials it makes such a beautiful cover and the feeling, I love the feeling of material when it's got Mod Podge and then it dries. It's just the most yummy, yummy texture. I love it. Anyway, anything that's that's um, leaning over like that is going to get trimmed off. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim off those edges. And um, so I've turned away all the pieces that overhung the edge. Now I'm going to take a Posca pen that has a chisel tip to it and go around those edges. I just like to color, cover 
that cardboard looking edge. So I'm just going to paint around that whole edge of the book. So all those edges are covered in paint pen and I just think that finishes it off and it's nicer to have that cardboard edge covered with a little bit of paint. And now what I like to do is to add some more, a little bit more decoration to this. I'm using some Kirin Dosh Neo Color 2 crayons to add a little bit of pops of color here and there. So taking like a really bright green, this is, let's see, yellow green, going over where this is green, and just adding a little bit of color to it and just kind of rubbing it out. And I'm gonna just do that in a couple places. With a couple different colors that kind of coordinate. And I'm just kind of wetting my finger and using it to blend out the color. It just makes really pretty pops of color on the squares. So I'm going to do that in a few places here and there and then I'll show you what I'll do next. I'm taking the darkest blue which is the um, Prussian blue and I'm going around the edge and making it almost look like a distressed edge by just coloring that whole edge and then blending it out and it just makes it look nice and grungy and distressed. I like it how it ties it all together and makes it have that kind of grungy distressed look. I think that looks really cool. So I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Next I took it outside and I splattered gold paint on the front. So I used a soft brush. I watered down the gold paint a little bit and did some splatters across the front. And I just think that really makes this look so super cool in person. And then some splatters on the back, just a few. I'm going to take my crocodile and I'm going to set it to the largest hole for doing eyelets. And I'm going to just estimate what center is and put this in and cut a punch a hole right through the book and I'm not worrying about that envelope that comes in the front because I don't really use it so I'm gonna punch a hole there and then opposite of it I'm gonna come right across and right here do the same thing. Okay. Next I'm just taking some binding tape like you can get anywhere in a sewing department of a local craft store. And I cut two pieces and they're 20 inches long. I'm going to fold one in half. And then I kind of just like crimp it into a little point, put that up through the hole that I punched in the book and it creates a loop. And then put your tails through the loop and pull. And I put one of those on the back and I'm going to put one of those on the front. So again, fold it in half, kind of bunch it through, put it through the hole. Tails through the loop, give it a tug. And now I have a great way of tying my book closed. I can just tie this and make a bow and 20 inches works perfectly for that. 
so it matches the book and it holds it closed and it holds it a little tighter than the elastics did so I don't miss that I took the elastics off the original elastics that come on the book that I took them off so that's it that's how I like to complete my complete my journals you can glue fancy things on here um, glass beads or even decorate a uh, piece of cardboard you know the card make the cardboard hearts where you wire wrap them and collage them put that anything you want you can put on the front of your book this book particularly I love how it turned out I just like the words that I found on the material the splattered paint the material it just looks great I don't need anything else on it um, I love that sunflower in the back that's just super fun so I'm done done with my journal and I hope this gave you an idea of a great way to decorate the cover of your Ranger Dilutions journal because they work really really well with material and if you've ever put material down with Mod Podge and let it dry it just has the most beautiful wonderful feeling to it and look to it and I love all the little threads the little um, shreds and threads I added those you know made sure I left those on so that it's got lots of those cool little grungy shredded bits on it and it's beautiful I love it I like the edge done in blue paint I like the binding tape closure and it just completes this journal so done and dusted took years but it's a labor of love and I love my journal I hope you do too thanks for watching and thanks for stopping by go make art in your journal because art sues the heart.